then, the technique we are going to experience today is batik textile painting. Now the resources we have in front of us are a wax heater, which is heating soy wax, and soy wax is chosen because it is a low emissions and low melting wax, thus cutting back on uh, fumes and uh, emissions that are injurious to health. What I'm going to do to start with is just do a small experimental piece just showing you how the jantings work. The wax is heated, it takes about half an hour to heat. Uh, this is a digital heater so we can set, safely set the temperature and I've set it to 90 degrees which is the maximum um, temperature for the soy wax. It's possible to also use a mixture of um, paraffin wax and beeswax, but that mixture does tend to give off more emissions. There's also some janting, which we will use to transfer the wax to the cloth. I'm now going to move on to my main picture. Uh, there's a face, head, shoulders, and then this very elaborate headdress, which I've um, combined images to create. Uh, so I'm going to start with the headdress because that allows a little bit more scope for uh, splashes and we are going to put the hot wax onto fine white cotton and I've used a frame. This is going to be the, the final piece which is a portrait again influenced by uh, faces from Ethiopian culture and this is an Indonesian technique originally but now it's obviously used all over the world. You don't have to have a frame, you can just stretch onto the table or put a piece of newspaper underneath or a plastic cloth. Um, but this is ideal, if you can have a frame it's a good way of doing it. And there are a number of health and safety issues. Obviously this wax is 90 degrees, it's hot. It needs to be hot to melt through the fabric. It can injure your skin if you get it on your skin. So avoid that. Um, if you do get it on your skin, immediately go and cold water wash it. Uh, the fumes, very low emissions with this, but be sure to open a window. And if you do have any reactions at all, then leave the room and get some fresh air. So the janting is dipped in. I've got a few different jantings, different um, size of nozzle, and you get some wax in the janting. This is just a little drip tray, a little plastic tray that you can pick up. While you're using the jantings, it's okay to keep them in, but don't leave them in there permanently. It does weaken them, and there's a danger that they could be left overnight the, um, the wax firms up and then occasionally somebody tries to get the janting out while the wax is hard and obviously they wreck the janting. You can see you have to be a bit forgiving because the technique is quite splashy. I can see that the wax is hot enough because it's going right through the cloth. That is essential as it's going to act as a resist. I've switched my wax heaters off. I've left the window open to create some ventilation because uh, although it's low fume, it's good to have a ventilated room. And I'm ready now to start painting uh, my image. So there's a range of different fabric paints that could be used. Uh, the Procyon mixed dyes are very popular with textile artists. Uh, they are powdered dyes that need to be mixed up with water. The ones that I'm going to use however, and that's just because I'm working individually and I'm just making up a small quantity, I'm going to use these um, fabric paints, consortium uh, ready mix fabric paints and um, I've got some in the palette here and I'm just going to add them straight away to the image, mixing them like paints. These inks need to be ironed to make colour fast, but uh, it's not a problem because we, we iron off the wax anyway with a batik. So that process 
is part of the boutique process anyway. Where the wax is, you can see that the dye doesn't settle. You get the characteristic boutique wax resist. So the painting's finished and I'll now leave it overnight to dry. When it's dry, I'll iron it off. My boutique's dried out and the next stage now is to iron off the wax. So I have taken off the cloth from the ironing board. The iron is hot the wire is taped down and it's not on steam. I've got a pad of newspaper. I don't need the cover on the ironing board because I don't want to get any leakage of wax on it. Pile of newspaper, a layer of newsprint, key newsprint. My petite, another layer of clean newsprint and further layers of newspaper. So, I'm just going to apply heat. It's a good idea to make sure you've got some ventilation as it can be a little fumy. Okay, the image is wax free. Immediately switch off the iron and the image is ready. My boutique painting is finished. You can see the wax resist lines and that would be complete except I'm going to give you an additional technique adding another layer of depth and colour to the painting but also showing you a technique called gutta. It's a silicone based resist and uh, it can be just added straight from the tube, whereas the, wrap, the wax resist obviously needs to be heated up. It's mainly used for silk painting, so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration so you can see how it works on a piece of stretched silk. So you can see you can get a really quite a fine line. So there's a very stylized face using the Gouter technique. It comes in a variety of colours, metallic colours, uh, which would be left in. I've got bronze, gold and silver here, but also colourless resist that you may remove after dyeing. So, I've completed my image. I've added another layer of gouta silicone resist as an additional decorative layer to the image, enriching it and increasing its carnivalesque quality.